Can I help you? you Take your hands off me. Hi, my name is Scott Rogers. I'm a master instructor in Kyushu Jitsu pressure point fighting. In this series, we're going to cover advanced pressure point drills and knockouts. We already assume that you have a basic knowledge of where these points are and how to activate them. If you don't, we recommend purchasing our previous series, which covers all of the point locations throughout the body, how to activate them, how best to strike them, and what effect they will cause. On this series, we're going to cover pressure point drills detailing how to use the points against realistic attacks, punches, uh, stick attacks, kicks, and so on. We're going to cover advanced knockout techniques that with a little bit of training you'll be able to perform them, but we always recommend that you train under a qualified instructor. Pressure point techniques can be dangerous if performed improperly, and we want to make sure nobody gets injured during training. I hope you enjoy this series, and thank you. First series of drills that we're going to do are what I call directional drills. When somebody attacks you, that could be a punch, a kick, a stick, a knife, whatever. More importantly than knowing what they're attacking you with is how they're attacking, what direction the attack is coming in. If I take a stick and I swing it to Doosan, what he's concerned with is not that I have a stick, but that it's coming laterally across his body. If I do the exact same thing with a punch, it's still coming in a circle. If I use a kick, it's still coming in a circle. Rather than learning a separate defense for all of them, we're going to use a drill that will teach you to defend all those techniques just by perceiving what direction the attack is coming in. The main directions that are most important are circular, straight in, as in punching or any type of a grabbing attack, low thrusting, which would be more for a knife or a front kick, and the downward motion, which is almost always a weapon, usually a stick or a bottle. Those are the four most important directions. If you learn to defend them, almost any attack falls within that range. The first drill is called the hook punch drill. Okay, we're going to switch places for a second. The way the drill works is this. I come in a circle, and I just slap for now, because we're learning it. And he blocks with two hands. I come again. Now he comes to me. Freeze. What I'm trying to do is use the edge of my hand to actually chop the pressure points in his arm. What I'd like to do is hit this point, which is the lung five point, the lung six point, or the point that's on the bicep, the pericardium uh, four point. Now, if a punch is coming at me fast, I can't stop and try to hit it. So what I do is when he punches, I just chop with both arms. Right now, I struck the lung five point. This hand didn't strike anything, and that's okay. All I want to do, mostly I want to block, and if possible, strike at least one point. Now, for drill purposes, I just stick my hands up this way. In reality, I'm going to chop his arm, which will set up future strikes. If we did that in a drill, it would slow everything down and would not build the reflex. The reflex we want is the hand shooting up. This is a natural reflex based on people putting their hands up when they're scared, but we're just turning sideways and we're using the edge of the hands to make it a little more offensive. One big mistake people make is if you block with one hand, when the arm bends, it's going to hit you. If you do two hands and they're close together, you got the same problem. So you want to make sure your hands are at least 12 inches apart. So where your waist is, they shoot up. Rotate one, rotate two. Okay? So this is what the drill is going to look like, just the basic drill. I'll go first. Ready? One, two, we start slow. One, two, back and forth. As we get comfortable, we speed it up so that we're not thinking too much about the techniques. Okay, freeze. Now, first step of the drill is not getting hit. Self-defense situation, somebody attacks you, don't get hit. Second step is immediately strike the other person back. The reason for this is if he throws his first punch, if he throws that second punch in a real situation, I might not get from left to right in time. For drill purposes, we're working on waist twist. In reality, I need to stop that punch, and the way I'm going to do that is with that chop. So when he throws his first punch, immediately block and chop. Once I complete these two techniques, Everything is open to me. If I decide I want to go for an arm lock, I go for it. If I decide I want to throw him, I go for it. 
So the, once you get comfortable with just the blocking portion of the drill, we add the block and the chop. So he's going to show us first, one, back and forth. Obviously don't hit each other too hard or nobody will be standing there. Very good. Okay. So the core of the drill, block and chop, block and chop. Once I complete that chop, the third technique is always going to be different. I call it the one, two, three system. Step one is defend. Step two, immediately hit. Step three is where your particular martial art will come in. Again, if you're doing a throwing art, you'll look to fit a throw into there. If you're doing jujitsu or something, you'll look to drop down and sweep the leg. If you want to continue striking, you can do that. So we're going to show you a couple of those variations. The easiest one and the one that we're going to do first is going to be to add another pressure point strike, which is going to be the palm strike to the jaw. So when he throws his punch, one, two, three. Now we do the other side. Now he goes. Back and forth. Okay, so we have one, two, and immediately follow with the palm strike. This is one option of using only our hands. Second option would involve using our knee strike, and this time we would be striking either to the inside of his thigh on the spleen 11 point in the center, or up into his ribs on the liver 13 point where the elbow touches the body. So just turn a little bit. So when he throws his punch, two, I can either come to the leg point and strike it, then he comes on the other side, and I strike that point, or if I want to go higher, just turn for a little bit, right where his elbow touches his body is where I'm going to aim for, one, two, and I pick the knee up. Other side, one, two, and I pick the knee up. So now we have our striking options. We can palm, we can knee strike. We can easily transfer to a joint locking technique. Joint locking is when we put the joints of the body, the elbow, the wrist, the knee, at a point where they're about to break. When he throws his punch, let's actually turn to this side. After the initial two moves, which don't change, I pass the arm in front of me, step under, and I lock it till he taps. We go back and we do the other side. One, two, and we lock the elbow on this side. Then when you're with a partner, you let your partner go. He chops, and he would lock, other side, and he would lock, and you would tap. And you would go back and forth a few times. After every few repetitions, you go back to the initial drill, just block and chop. This way you don't forget that this is the important part. This is the part that never changes. Now, something I forgot to mention is that when we're doing the chop, we're aiming exactly where his ear is, halfway between his ear and his shoulder, dead center. This is the large intestine 18 point on the neck. It's halfway between top and bottom, halfway between front and back. If you looked at a picture of Frankenstein, it's where the bolts go. And this is where we chop into the spot to get a really good effect, okay? So every chop that we throw, punch, comes into that spot, all right? After we chop, we did our palm, we did our knee, we did our arm lock. Now we're gonna add a throw. He throws his punch, one, two. The easiest throw to do, step behind, sweep him down. We help him back up, we let him do the other side. Lock, chop, sweep behind, and help him back up, okay? Any throw can be used from this point. When he punches, if I want to do a hip throw, this is where I would lift him. After he punches, if I wanted to do a head throw, this is where I would roll him backwards. It's pretty much up to what you know, but the things that never change are the drill. The key component is this. Once you stun him and once you stop his punch, that gives you that quarter second, half second opportunity to put any technique you want into effect. Now, how do we do this drill if there's a weapon involved? Opponent has a knife, okay? When he slashes, there's no difference. He's still aiming for my throat. Slice comes in, block and chop, okay? If he had a stick, just grab that stick behind you there, son. The only difference, come across, is I can't stand here. When he comes in with the technique, I would have to move in a little bit. So for real application, things are a little different. Keep in mind, too, that the drill is not exactly the way you're going to use it. In drill format, our feet stay stationary, and we go back and forth. In real situation, just coming with a right punch, I step into it. So as he steps towards me, I step towards him, and then go to my technique. Again, the purpose of a drill is to develop a reflex. If I have to do all those moves, I'm not developing a reflex, I'm practicing technique. When I stay close, really fast with the drill, and we do this really quick, this is just developing a reflex for these two moves. 
Then we break apart and we say, okay, self-defense, come in with the punch. And then we have to go to our techniques from here. So real situation, we always move in. Drill purposes, we just focus on getting that reflex block and chop immediately. Whether he's got a stick, a knife, his hands, it's all the same. Now, a couple of variations. If I come towards him and he blocks, okay, do the exact same block. Do the exact same block. Same block. It doesn't matter. Anything that comes in a circle, he will block this way. The slight difference will be the counterattack. If he throws a hook punch, I can counter with my chop perfectly. If he threw a back fist, I would have to use a palm strike or an elbow strike or something else. But the most important thing was that I did not get hit. If he threw a roundhouse kick and I blocked, I could still move in with the chop. If he threw a spinning kick, hook kick, I would have to come in with the palm strike. So basically, if I ended up inside his arms, I would chop. If I ended up outside of his arms, I would use the palm. So that's a pretty good rule. If you don't want to use the palm, we can use a fist. On the inside, if for some reason you don't like to chop, we can use the knuckle strike behind the jaw into the triple warmer 17 point. So the drill then would look one, two, one, two. You do the same, one, two, one, two. Just like that. We want the two knuckles to fit right in the hole behind the jaw. It's just, if not more sensitive than the neck. Personally, I prefer the open hands because you're blocking open-handed and you're more relaxed. Once you make a fist, it tends to tense you up a bit. All right, so this is our hook punch drill. The next drill we're gonna do is the straight motion drill. Almost every attack falls into this category. Whether he's pushing towards me, his arms are moving in a straight line. If he tries to grab me, straight line. If he straight punches, straight line. If he was thrusting a knife, anything that goes forward where he reaches out, he's coming in a straight line. So rather than learning to defend each individually, we're gonna use one simple block that covers all of it. The way that block works is we slap with one hand and we check with the other hand. So it's a double block, one, two. One, two, other side, one, two. Now, when we do it realistically and he punches, we step in so we can counterattack. Because it's a drill, we're not gonna move our feet and we're just gonna get used to the coordination of the hands. So this is the way it's gonna start. We're gonna start shoulder width apart so that we can't reach each other. You don't wanna hit each other during the drill. He throws his first punch, I block his wrist and his elbow. Now I punch him, wrist, elbow, wrist, elbow, wrist, elbow. Back and forth, nice and slow, one, two, one, two. And the idea is to pick up the speed until it gets real smooth and you're not thinking about it anymore. Now if he steps back and punches, you'll do that move lightning quick. So we're gonna slow it down one more time. This one's a little tricky. Punches out, super slow motion, wrist, elbow. Now I hit him. Wrist, elbow, he hits me. Wrist, elbow. One, two, one, two, back and forth. All right, one more time, we'll speed it up a little. Good. That's it. Good. Good. Okay. Now, some applications from here. The most obvious one is the straight punch. He punches to my face, I block, and I immediately strike. So anytime I do this drill, this and this follows. This can either strike the gallbladder 20 point behind the head, or if his face is turned a little bit more, I'll come to the temple region right over here near the corner of the eye. So he throws his punch, one, two either here or here. It all depends on how much he turns his face when he punches. That's something I'll have to determine as I'm moving. The footwork in this drill is very similar to what karate people call a front stance. A front stance is a 45 degree step in and away from your opponent. If we turn sideways, you can see that me and Dusan are lined up straight. If he was to throw his punch at me and I stayed here, I'm in the line of the punch. That would mean my hands would have to do all the work, which isn't so good. What I wanna do is take a step in and away. From here now, he's next to me. This allows his punch to travel past me even if I don't contact it. So if he punches very straight, just doing this is a good defense. Of course, I don't want to rely on that. I want to use my hands also. So when I step, I step in with it. So now we're going to turn back this way. Immediately, one, two,